Did <coughs> So Florence Chadwick was the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions, quite an amazing woman. But then on the 4th of July, good old Independence Day in America, um, in 1951 she attempted to swim the 26 miles from Catalina Island to the Californian coast. And the challenge was not so much the distance, but rather the bone-chilling waters of the Pacific. And to complicate matters, there was a dense fog that lay over the entire area, making it impossible for her to see the land. And then after about 15 hours in the water and with a half a mile to go to her goal, uh, she gave up. And later on, she told a reporter, I'm not excusing myself, but if I could have seen the land, I might have made it. And then shortly afterwards, she attempted the same feat again. And once more there was a misty fog obscuring the coastline and she couldn't see the shore. But this time she made it because she kept reminding herself that the land was there. And with that confidence she bravely swam on and she achieved her goal and in fact she broke the men's record by two hours. So as I say, quite an amazing lady. Have you ever felt like giving up? It, life seems to be such a struggle, doesn't it, with the various financial problems that we have, with unemployment, with uh, strained relationships, possibly at home, or with health problems. You don't feel strong enough to carry on. And perhaps you felt like that as you follow the Lord, that maybe I just don't want to carry on. I'm going to give up. Weak, discouraged, and ready to give up. And at such times it's a great help to see the big picture, to know the hope to which we have been called and the inheritance that awaits us. Chapter 11 here in Joshua ends with this Israel entering into their inheritance and the land enjoying rest from war. But before we jump to the conclusion that life is going to be a doddle for us once we get there, uh, let's remind ourselves what we need to understand from this chapter. What actually is it saying? For everything is not really what it seems at first sight. In just a few verses it sounds then as if the Canaanites have uh, just destroyed everything in a matter of moments. And uh, a day or two later, everything's over, that's it. But chapter 11 is really a summary of what took place over a longer period of time. And so verse 18, Joshua made war for a long time with all those kings. So we're being told here, everything has been telescoped into a very short space. The entire land was taken by Joshua and the Israelites, and it's described by region with the limits set at Mount Halak, uh, southwest of the Dead Sea, and Baal Gad in the north by Mount Hermon. And it will become apparent in chapter 13 that there still remained much land to be possessed. The main force of the Canaanites was destroyed, but there was still resistance. The war was won, but the battles continued. We saw last week that the Canaanites were under divine judgment for four centuries of unrepentant wickedness, and that included the sins of idolatry, temple prostitution, adultery, homosexuality, incest, murder, bestiality, rape, and child sacrifice. And after 400 years of divine patience, they were now ripe for divine judgment. And so when Israel entered Canaan as God's instrument of judgment, they still uh, refused the grace of God. Only Gibeon, deceptive as they were, made a treaty of peace and so were kept alive. All of the other kings refused to bow before Yahweh, who is God in heaven above and God on earth below, as Rahab from Jericho had already acknowledged. And their refusal to acknowledge Yahweh as the sovereign Lord, and their refusal to obey his will, is the idea behind that word hardened. The word literally means a drying out of something. And during the recent rains, I don't know whether you've see, seen this too, the path through our playing fields nearby our house was literally a quagmire. Cyclists rode through it and they left deep grooves in it. But now that the sun has returned, 
these grooves have hardened and they will only soften again with more rain. Hardening is a process. And over 400 years, the Canaanites hardened their hearts to God's laws until God made that permanent and ripe for judgment. Their choices then had eternal consequences. And having persistently hardened their hearts to God, there was no more opportunity to repent. When evil is unrepented, there can be no more mercy, only judgment. And evil must be punished by a God who is holy and just. A further indication that there were still many battles ahead was the fact that they were now to battle the Anakim. And these were people of great size and considerable strength, physical strength, mighty warriors indeed. And when Moses sent spies into Canaan, ten of them returned, ten out of twelve, returned with reports of these people saying, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying the land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim. And we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. And this was their greatest fear, that they would face the Anakim in these battles. Now in the boxing world, it would be rather like me facing Mike Tyson. You think I'd win? I don't think so. I don't think I'd stand much chance. But there was a champion in Israel, besides Joshua, Caleb son of Jephunneh, one of the twelve spies, having faith in God, urged the people at that time earlier on to trust in the Lord against these Anakim. And he would be the one eventually to drive them out of the hill country around Hebron, as is mentioned later on in chapter 14. So in summary, Joshua destroyed all of the Anakim in Israelite territory, but in other areas where cities had not been captured, the Anakim survived to be a thorn in the flesh of the side of Israel. The most renowned, of course, was Goliath of Gath. And as the 12 tribes of Israel received their inheritance in Canaan, they were to continue to fight and destroy all of the Canaanites. But sadly, once life became easier, they gave up the fighting and they tolerated the presence of the surviving Canaanites. After the death of Joshua, a new generation grew up who no longer followed the Lord and adopted the gods of the Canaanites. And some of the cities previously captured were once again overcome by the Canaanites. Others like Hadzor were rebuilt by the Canaanites and had to be reconquered at a later date. And when the people of Israel were faithful to the Lord, they won their battles. But when they turned away from the Lord to follow idols, the Lord allowed them to be defeated by their enemies. And this is the story that is going to be taken up in the book of Judges just after Joshua. Perhaps, like me, you have experienced those ups and downs in your relationship with the Lord. When we walk in faith and obedience, we find the Lord's strength in overcoming the wiles of the devil. Equally, when we walk in our own way in disobedience to the Lord, We are defeated until we come back in repentance and once again trust in the Lord to fight our battles with us. In Romans 15 verse 4 it says, Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture we might have hope. And as we turn to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, We're exhorted to fix our eyes on Jesus and not to harden our hearts. This was Israel's problem in the wilderness, such that a whole generation did not enter the promised land because of unbelief and disobedience. They listened to the ten spies and they hardened their hearts to the voice of God through Joshua and Caleb. And only when that generation had passed away was Joshua able to lead Israel into the promised land and claim their inheritance. 
But the book of Hebrews tells us of a better rest than that gained through Joshua. So going to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. And the Sabbath rest looks backwards as well as forwards. It looks backwards to the work of creation when God created the heavens and the earth in six days and then rested on the seventh, the Sabbath. He rested from his creative work but continued that sustaining work whereby he upholds the universe by his word of power. And that Sabbath rest started following creation but it continues on into eternity. And it is this rest that is open to all who believe the gospel. And so we go on, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. And as we believe the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we enter that rest. We, we need to persevere in faith so that we may not fall through disobedience. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus, our enemy has been defeated and we may enjoy the riches of this glorious inheritance as he empowers us to walk in faith. Yes, there will be battles ahead, but our enemy is a defeated foe. Nevertheless, we take our warning from those in Israel who chose the easy path and gave up the battle and disobeyed the command to destroy the Canaanites. Instead, we are to fight that good fight of faith with Christ as our strength and Christ our might. Are we weak, discouraged and ready to give up? The God who overcame the Canaanites is the same God who can help us overcome in the struggles that we face day by day. And so it goes on, and we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, you may not be lazy, you may not give up, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. <coughs> So there still remains much land to possess for us here today. There are those internal struggles as we wrestle with sin. We have those temptations that keep on coming again and again. And those struggles we fight in the power of the Spirit. And then there are those struggles as we reach out with the Gospel to extend the Kingdom of God in Crawley and in the world. And we're called to engage in these battles together until Christ comes again. But the Sabbath rest also looks forward to the time when there will be no more battles against evil because Satan himself and all of his forces have been destroyed. The people of faith will enjoy perfect rest as a united people, even while they continue to be active in a new heaven and a new earth. And so Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. All these, all of these heroes of faith that are mentioned in that chapter of faith all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. And as with Abraham and these heroes of faith in, uh, in chapter 11 of Hebrews, the promise will find its fulfilment in a better country, and in a better city, and in a better kingdom. And so it goes on to say, you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, 
and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And as we saw last week, Christ Jesus has won the victory. Our enemy is defeated and we have the forgiveness of our sins as we are united by faith with the family of God. We have been justified by grace, but we also need to be sanctified as we walk in faith and obedience through our ongoing battles with temptation to sin. So Romans 5 verses 1 to 9 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith. We've entered the promised land. We're in. We're in his rest. We've obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. And as we fight in the Holy Spirit's strength, we're being changed to become more and more like Christ, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. This is our inheritance, and our inheritance as God's children awaits us, and this is the hope that spurs us on to persevere, as Florence Chadwick did, not to give up, but to persevere. She did it to gain earthly glory, but we persevere to gain eternal glory in Christ's presence, together with all those who have put their faith in the living God. Joshua took the entire land of Canaan. The inheritance was ready to be claimed, and the land had rest from war. Jesus, the new Joshua, has completed his mission and defeated the enemy. And until he comes again, he calls us to go in his name and rescue others from the power of Satan to share with us in his inheritance and then we too will be at rest. Shall we pray together? <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have prepared a place for us. You've prepared that rest for us. But Lord, you want us to be united with all of those who have believed on that day when you come again in glory. And as we wait for you to come, we want to persevere. We don't want to give up, Lord. We ask that you'll continue to strengthen us by your Holy Spirit within us and within the church. And as you move in power, may you bring many others to yourself that the, the enemy that we face day by day, with all of his wiles, all of the ways in which he puts people into bondage, that he may be defeated once and for all. And Lord, that you may get the glory for all that you have done in us and through us, through the church. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to...